you know, first of all, if somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer, I will immediately kind of defer it to the group and say, you know, does anybody have experience with this? Does anybody, you know, you know, know the answer? And then if we still don't get what we're looking for, I often use that as, since I do a lot of work in digital literacy, I use that as an opportunity for us to, you know, search the internet for an answer because that in itself can be an, a lesson for people and learning how to do just basic internet searches to find the answer. Um, yeah, I put the question back to them. So instead of um, answering the question, I say, well, let's hear what the group has to say, and I just give it back to them. Um, and a lot of times I'm just very um, direct at, okay, why don't you guys talk about it in groups? I would respond honestly that I don't know, um, but that has to be followed with a call to action, so let's find out. Uh, as an example, you know, when uh, we've done this model with, with coding, one of the first things that we cover is how to Google and what Stack Overflow is, so that how you can look at questions that other people have asked. And uh, some of the best um, uh, learning moments that I've seen in this sort of model have come from people who are, in fact, experts at the topic and who've been stumped by a question. So I, I think, again, just showing that it's okay not to know everything and that even experts get tripped up sometimes um, and that all you have to do is just uh, be able to frame a question and be, uh, be able to look out. Somebody's probably had that question before, so you'll be able to find an answer. I try to, like if I'm, if, if I'm posed a question, pose that question back to the entire class and see if someone else can answer it besides me um, to stress that I'm not the teacher in the situation, that um, a whole room of people are learning something together and there can be an expert ar around you that's not, that's not the teacher.